In this two-part series, I'm going to show you how to build this account creation form from scratch. In the first part of this tutorial, I showed you how I use the Figma design to define the HTML structure and the CSS. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to add some basic validation with vanilla JavaScript. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm continuing from where the last tutorial left off. If you didn't watch the first tutorial in the series, I highly recommend watching that video before diving into this one. In that video, I went over the entire Figma design and how I used it to inform the HTML structure, and then I applied all of the CSS that you see here. Just to briefly go over the structure, I have a div with a class of container, and that container holds all the elements. In here, I have a container header, which contains the title for the page. And then beneath that, I have a form. And the form contains three elements. It has an input for the username, an input for the password, and a submit button. Within each form group, I have two icons, one for the success state and one for the error state. And then beneath that, I have a form message, which will show a message in the error state. Right now, the JavaScript is completely empty. So if I were to click that submit button, the form would not have the expected behavior. So I'm going to start by going inside of the JavaScript and declaring some variables. So within the JavaScript, first I'm going to declare a variable for the actual form. So I'm going to write let form equal document dot query selector, and then reference that class of form. And then I need to declare variables for the actual form elements. So I'm going to write one for the username and one for the password. So I'm going to write let username equal document dot query selector and then reference the class of form username. And then I'm going to follow a very similar procedure for the password. Great, so now that we have these variables declared, I can add an event listener to the page. So I'm going to write form dot add event listener. And when that submit button is clicked, I want it to run a function called check form. So the next thing I need to do is actually write this function. So I'm going to say function check form. And within here, I'm going to put an E meaning event. And the first thing I'm going to do is write E dot prevent default because by default, a form is going to want to bring the user to a new page, but I actually don't want to bring the user to a new page in this example. I want to keep them on this page. And just to ensure that this is working so far, I'm going to write console log submit just to verify things are working properly. So I'm going to bring up my console and I'm going to click the submit button. And once I do, I actually see that console log. So I know that this is working properly. So I'm going to remove that. And the next thing I'm going to do is basically check when content is actually inside of the username field. So I'm going to make a new variable called username value, and I'm going to set it equal to username dot value dot trim and trim just removes the spaces. So in that way, username value will only hold the content that the user has written and not include any spaces. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the password field. Going back to the design, we can see the styling for the error state. In the error state, I want this icon to appear, I want the border to turn red, and I want an error message to appear beneath the form. In the success state, I want the border to turn green, and I want the success icon to become visible. So now we basically have to check the username value and the password value to determine if it's in the success state or the error state. So beneath this, I'm going to write an if statement. So I'm going to say if username value equals an empty string, meaning that they didn't put anything in the username field, I want to show the error state. I'm going to create a function called show error. And for this function, I'm going to pass in a few values. 
First, I'm going to pass in username because that is the element that I want to have the error state for. And then I'm going to include the message that I want to be shown. So I'm just going to write enter a username. And then for the else statement, which is when the user actually inputted information, I'm going to create another function called show success. And for the show success, I'm also going to pass in the username. Now this is rather basic validation because I'm just checking if the user actually inputted any information, but you can definitely expand this to verify if the user included a name that was six characters long or included letters and a number. There are various other kinds of validations you can add to this. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the password value. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm just going to check if the password input field has any content in it. And if it doesn't, I'm going to show an error for the password. And I'm going to include a different error message. And if someone did include information, I'm just going to show the success state for that form group. So now we have these two functions declared, show error and show success. So the next thing we have to do is actually write these functions. So beneath this, I'm going to write function show error, and I'm going to pass in two values for this function. The first one being the input, meaning the input type. So that's why I had username or password as the first parameter. And then the second item is the actual error message. Now, when someone types inside of the input field, I don't want to only modify the CSS for the actual input. If we go back to the design, we can see that that error state affects multiple elements in the design. I want this icon to be visible, I want the border to change, and I want this message to be displayed. So there are multiple things that I have to modify if this form element is in the error state. So to have full control over that, I'm going to create a variable called form group. And I'm going to set it equal to the input's parent element. So in this example, if the password has an error state, it actually only references this document.query selector, which is just the actual input field. But I don't want to only modify the input field. I want to modify the paragraph tag and the SVG. So in order to do that, that's why I'm referencing the parent element. And then for that form group, I'm going to add a class called form error, which we will create. I also want the error message to be displayed. So here I'm going to create a variable called message and set it equal to that form group dot query selector. And the selector is that class of form message. And I want this message to equal the text that we pass through the function. So I'm going to set the message dot inner text to equal that error message. Next, I'm going to make the function for the success state. So here I'm going to write function show success, and I'm going to pass in an input. And again, the input references which form element will get that success state. So here I'm also going to create the same variable of form group and set it equal to the input dot parent element. And then I'm going to remove the class of form error in case there was an error state first and then there was a success state. And then I'm going to add the class of form success. So now let's try it out. I click submit and I see an error. I realized I did not add those classes to the actual input elements, so I'm just adding form username as a class for the username and form password for a class, of the password field. So now just to verify if this is working properly, I'm going to add a console log with an error statement in the error function just to make sure that this is working. And I click submit and I see the word error twice, so I know that this is working properly. So I can remove that. And next, I just need to add these classes for the form error and the form success date. So going back inside of the CSS, I'm going under this class of form. And right above the button styling, I'm going to add the states here. So first, I'm going to add the code for the success state. 
So going back to the design, we can see that for the success date, I want to change the border color and I want that icon to be visible. So in the CSS, I'm going to write and success input, and I'm going to change the border to one pixel solid and the specific color that I want. And then for the icon, I'm going to write and success SVG with a class of form success icon, which directly reflects the SVG in the HTML. And right now it's set to a display of none. That's why we don't see it in the form, but I'm going to change it here to a display of block. So now I'm going to go inside of the form and I'm just going to write some text here and I'm going to click submit and I got another error. So it says that show success is not defined. So I'm just going to check the function and I had a little typo. So now let's try it again. And now I see the success date. Great. So now we can move on to the error state. So beneath this, I'm going to write error state and I'm going to write and error input. And for this, I'm also going to modify the border. I'm also going to want to show the error icon SVG. So here I'm going to write and error SVG with a class of form error icon. And for this, I'm also going to set the display of this to block. Next, I'm going to work on the message that's going to be visible beneath the form input. So under this, I'm going to write and error, the paragraph tag with a class of form message. And for this element, I'm also going to set the display of this to block. So now without typing anything into the username or the password field, I'm going to click submit and we actually see both error states. So now I'm going to type in some text, I click submit, and now the username is in the success state and the password is still in the error state. So now this is working properly. So there you go. That's how I made this account creation form from scratch. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.